As stories of sexual harassment and abuse dominate news headlines, people are banding together more than ever to speak up and, uh, and uh, speak out and stand up. The Me Too movement has grown into a worldwide platform for sexual abuse victims to support one another. And even celebrities like Alyssa Milano, Gabrielle Union, and Viola Davis have joined the cause and share their support via hashtag Me Too. I am so honored to have the woman that started it all here today. Please welcome today's leading lady, Tarana Burke. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Tarana. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So, my first question, uh, and I mean this with all due respect, <laughs> I, I thought hashtag Me Too the Me Too part of it had been uh, something that was fairly recent. Mm -hmm. But this, this has been something that you've championed for many years. Yeah, I started the Me Too movement, uh, the campaign around Me Too, over a decade ago. I was uh, living in the South and working with young people and was trying to find a way to connect with them around issues of sexual violence because they were continuously revealing their experience with sexual violence to me. I'm a three-time survivor of sexual violence. Um, and I'm surrounded by people who are survivors, and it's really difficult to find ways to connect with people. And Me Too is such an easy way to exchange empathy mm -hmm. as opposed to sympathy, right? Sure. You know, when somebody shares a story of trauma with you or shares their um, story around surviving sexual violence, if you say, oh, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you, that immediately puts a, a space between us, a right. distance that says, that's you but not me. Right. But when you say something like Me Too, it's a simple exchange of empathy that says, I hear you and I understand you and I'm here. Right. How did you cope with it? You know, I don't know if coping is the right word, right? I think that I um, created compartments, right? I think that a lot of times survivors of trauma don't learn how to cope easily. And so what I did early on is I compartmentalized and I overcorrected. Mm -hmm. Like we're really used to hearing about survivors of sexual violence or trauma who um, maybe they turn to drugs or maybe they turn to, you know, other kinds of self-mutilation um, or things like that. But I overcorrected. I became a perfectionist. So I had to be a perfect student and a perfect athlete and a perfect daughter um, to cover up this sin that was inside of me that I was holding. The fact that I'm able to have these kind of conversations and talk about it in mainstream media and, and be really vocal and stand up and support people who have been through this, I feel really proud of that. Uh, you, you should. I mean, that's, leading ladies are <laughs> so important to this show, and you are, you are the poster child for leading ladies. Thank you. Now, you have a daughter. I do. And how old is she? My daughter's 19. And how has she uh, affected you and helped your healing? You know, when I became pregnant, I was 23, and I was still trying to figure out what healing meant for me. And I remember... I remember finding out that I was having a daughter and I felt like I had an immediate need to figure out that healing because I didn't want to pass that trauma on to my daughter. Mm -hmm. And so I was vigilant about it when she was young and I was really intentional. Um, and I failed in a lot of ways, but my daughter has been the single most important part of my healing process. Mm. And, and she's my biggest champion and my hero. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> she's gorgeous. Thank you.